EECMS is introducing the first virtual employment equity compliance solution by taking your consultant online. Clients are no longer required to conduct face-to-face -face meetings with our consultants. Our virtual solution will allow clients from around the globe to interact, consult and train with their respective consultants from the comfort of their own desk. With our web-based compliance services, your employment equity solution submissions and consultations will stay compliant as per the requirements of the Act, no matter where you are based. No more travelling or boardroom bookings, we bring the service to your desktop. Conduct conference calls with remotely based colleagues and superiors during the consult. Share live documents or screens to all attendees and consultants for brainstorming or clarification sessions. Audio visually record meeting discussions between yourselves and the consultant for references and notes. Join the web-based consultancy services today and comply with your employment equity services from the comfort of your own desk. Speak to your consultant for more information or contact our information centre for details on the services rendered. EECMS, your virtual employment equity compliance management service. EECMS utilizes an online tool to ensure full and total EE compliance as per the amended Act. We ensure that you are in full compliance with the Employment Equity Act. We do it all. You just need to connect with us as we aim to become your go-to guy. We meet and consult via our virtual solutions. We implement the Act and you achieve compliance. Employers with over 50 employees Agriculture over 6 million turnover, mining over 22.5 million turnover, manufacturing over 30 million turnover, electricity, gas and water over 30 million turnover, construction over 15 million turnover, retail and motor over 45 million turnover and more. Eliminate penalties. Increase a triple BEE score, forming a sense of belonging to employees. Effective transformation and promoting diversity. We submit the EEA2 and EEA4 reports on behalf of our clients, after approval thereof by the CEO or accounting officer. EECMS has a level 4 broad-based black economic empowerment rating. Our clients therefore qualify for 100% recognition when procuring from us. Our CEO has been involved in various marketing and communication entities. We have various EE specialists, including a compliance auditor with three years experience at one of the big four auditing firms. Our team has been involved in 62 DG reviews from 2017 to September 2019 with a 100% pass rate of companies not being referred to the Labour Court. Submissions of reports are done by a number of experienced data capturers and we have a staff complement to ensure the successful submissions of all our clients. We currently serve more than 160 companies who employ anything between 6 to 12,500 employees. Our client base includes private companies, listed companies, close corporations, non-profit organizations, educational institutions and government. Clients' annual turnover ranges from very little to more than 1 billion rand and we have a client base throughout South Africa. EECMS, your virtual employment equity compliance management service. Very welcome to everyone attending this uh, webinar today and thank you very much, uh, ladies and gents, colleagues. My name is Peter from EECMS. We will provide you with the presentation today on the COVID-19 policy and stage four ECMS company dealing in employment equity, ensuring that all our clients are in compliance with the employment equity legislation. What we have arranged for today is that we're going to have a meeting for more or less 45 minutes pertaining to the policies that you have received. And then we will have a Q&A session of uh, more or less an hour where you will be able to ask Charles as well as Dion certain questions pertaining to the COVID legislation that was gazetted uh, more or less a week ago. Thank you everyone for attending today. I will now give over to 
Charles. And he will then give the presentation between him and Dion on the COVID policies. Thank you. Morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you through the manual that um, I'm sure that you all received. This is a COVID-19 manual workshop. It's in terms of the regulations that was uh, gazetted about a week ago. So um, what I'll do is I'll take you through an introduction and then we'll look at the document that you all received and just have a quick run through it so that we know um, what we're dealing with and then go into the detail from there. Right. Um, so, to begin with, um, this is a return to work starter pack. We are all in a new world, we're all in a new era where we need guidelines on how to return to work. Um, the most important thing is that um, there's a guideline that we've developed with certain generic documents and pro forma documents that will assist you in this process to return to work and adhere to all the regulations. So. This is to assist you in the implementation of the applicable regulations. All right, so the applicable regulation, let's have a look at that. Um, the manual that we developed is informed by the Occupational Health and Safety Act, um, 85 of 1993, the Disaster Management Act that um, was promulgated way back in 2002, and informed by the regulations in terms of that act that we're in all too used to by now since we have started this state of disaster and lockdown. So the conclusion I want you to make is that the policy and the workplace plan that we've developed is not an option, it is compulsory. And therefore, every employer, whether you employ two, three, four people or 500 people needs to adhere to these regulations. Let's first have a look at the document. And I'm going to see if I can share the document with you. Okay, so um, to begin with, the document is a return to work starter pack manual. This consists um, of the starter pack guidelines, your COVID-19 return to work policy, your workplace plan, minutes of the meeting, the checklist, um, the warrant and appointment letter or the declaration rather from the compliance officer, your employer responsibilities checklist, your compliance mm -hmm. officer will help yeah. you with that, PPE register, visitors register, and then some thoughts on the use of the company vehicle policy amendments. I'm not going to go into too much detail because it's part of my uh, pr uh, presentation. I'm just gonna take you through the document. I'm sure that all of you have received the document and, and have tried to work through it already. Okay, so it starts with the guideline for 10 or less employees, medium and large businesses, your risk and hazard assessment, what will that be about then the employer responsibilities, etc. So this is your guidelines to begin with. The next part of the document is the COVID-19 return to work policy. Now we can assist you with that to, to uh, customize it for you. Uh, it can be amended as far as the regulations allow. I'll take you in detail through the document later, but for now let's just page the whole manual. So the COVID policy that is basically your starter starting point for the whole manual is followed by a workplace plan. Now, this workplace plan is developed to facilitate proper and effective application of the Occupational Health and Safety Act and the directions in terms of the National Disaster Act. You'll see that it comprises of three basic um, important elements. There needs to be a phased return to work for all employees. For larger companies, it will consist of more than uh, two phases, but for smaller companies, we suggest one or two phases. So this is to reintroduce the employees to the workplace and ensure that we do not introduce everyone at once. For smaller companies, we suggest the people that um, has no health, health issues be introduced in phase one, and then in phase two, the people with health issues be introduced later. Now that's your workplace plan. Again, I'm only taking you through this document quickly. Then the steps that you need to take to prepare the workplace. You'll have a, a register of employees and you'll see you have to uh, 
deal with them in three separate categories. Those who can work from home, those who are over the age of 60, and those with comorbidities at the moment. Then, just to go through the document quickly, there should be arrangements for visitors. We'll have a look at that. Okay. We'll have a structured phasing in plan. We've also included that in the work plan. You'll have a list of the employees where you will categorize them. Can they work from home? Are there over 60? Are there underlying comorbidities that we need to look at where they probably will come back to work later? And then the attendance register, that's important, where you basically go through the travel history of an employee and their health issues. That's part of the workplace plan. We we'll have we included the minutes of the meeting from page 39 onwards. Basically, that um, is the meeting that you'll have with your employees to implement everything with a decent checklist. There's a lot of checks and balances that you'll see in the document and built in, into the document. You'll have your COVID-19 checklist to see if you uh, adhere to everything and then a detailed um, uh, employer uh, responsibilities checklist later. The warrant where your compliance officer will be appointed and then warrant that everything is being adhered to and that you implemented the plan. All right, so what I'll do is I'll switch. Let me just give an indication if the um, quality of the sound is still bad. Um, Peter, I'm gonna leave it up to you to do the directions in that regard. Um, so what we'll do is we'll proceed for the moment. I see that some people say that the sound is bad on their side. Right, so then, as I've said, the right responsibility is checklist. This is a more detailed checklist in your compliance officer. This is no one more than a employee that you uh, appoint to be your compliance officer and assist you with this when going back to work. There's a detailed inspecting checklist that will go through everything and I will deal with my presentation later. And then the rest of the document comprises of personal protection equipment that you will issue, face masks, face shields, etc. Each and every employee and they will sign for the PPE. Your visitors register because um, there are certain guidelines on visitors visiting the a place of work or the workplace and then the last part of the document is um, certain guidelines with regards to your use of company legal policy that we suggest you also change all right so let's see if i can share the presentation again okay so the return to work company policy to begin with that forms part of the manual as i said it's compulsory uh, you cannot Think that this is an option, it's compulsory. What is the objective? The objective of the policy is to implement health and safety policies, and it should be read together with your health and safety policies. Uh, it is there to provide, as far as reasonably possible, a safe working environment and without risks to the health and safety of the employees. The application is to all employees and visitors in the workplace. The policy will remain in force as long as the National disaster is in place. Let's look at the content quickly. Back to basics. Um, the WHO, the World Health Organization, has certain guidelines that will assist us in doing a risk and hazard assessment. And this is included in the um, COVID 19 policy and in the employer guidelines. There is um, certain workplace controls that needs to be in place and the safe work practice guidelines. Obviously, we've looked at the PPE register and PPE that needs to be um, meted out, and then specific matters with regards to travel meetings, travel meetings and transgressions in your policy with regards to the regulations and the implementation thereof. Your risk and hazard assessment, I will not go into too much detail about that. Um, just safe to say that follow the guidelines in the policy and the detailed uh, employer guidelines. You'll find information on the risk and hazard assessment that you need to do in the COVID-19 policy. It must be done in the, on the premises before work is resumed and to identify risks. Just a quick look at the workplace plan that we need to have in place. Like I said, it's a structured employee phasing in plan and it 
must be developed and it must be adhered to. What we want to do with this workplace plan is to facilitate the proper application of the OSH Act and obviously the uh, regulations. Let's look at small businesses. Uh, what we've done is we um, given you a basic plan and um, it should reflect the size of, size of the business. Use the ready workplace plan and the manual. We provide it in many according to your business needs. Remember, when you're medium to um, large businesses, 10 or more employees to 500 employees, then we suggest a more detailed plan. And we can again use the ready workplace plan that we have in place in your manual and we can amend it to suit your needs. Now, quick look at the contents again. It's a phased return to work plan. You look at um, the risks, the 60 pluses, people who can work from home and look at possible comorbidities so that you can plan for that in your return to work and your phased return to work plan. Certain arrangements need to be in place. Social distancing, obviously, we've heard a lot about that. Sanitizing, we've heard a lot about that recently. Um, recent days, last night from the president again. And then screening systems need to be in place. And if possible, think of a rotation system where you have your employees working on a rotation basis. And you will have to have decent plans in place to look at visitors in the workplace. Now, to implement all of these rules, it's easy. You must have a meeting with your employees right after you've appointed your uh, representative who will be your compliance officer. You will be your right-hand man and assist you. It can be in smaller businesses, it can be the employer him or herself. You will be guided by the employer responsibilities on what to discuss. The minutes of the meeting uh, must be used to implement all the regulations. It's going to be your proof that you have implemented all of the regulations. And you'll be guided, as I've said, by the employer responsibilities. Your right-hand man or your um, compliance officer that you've appointed will assist you to implement everything. And if you follow the detailed guideline of employer responsibilities, you'll be able to do your risk assessment and ensure that you have implemented your workplace plan. Oh, your minutes of the meeting that we've provided will be your proof that you have complied. Hi, uh, Dion, can you hear me? Yes, Charles. Welcome. Are I'm you sorry. back in the meeting? Yeah, I'm back in the meeting. I don't know what happened. My humble apologies. I just want to, I want to, I just want to touch you with the minutes of the meeting and, and um, I just want to go a little bit back here and, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but that's how I understand we are working with an assessment framework, basically. Yeah. We have to identify possible or potential risks and exposures of the COVID-19 before we can actually get into this plan in detail. Isn't that so? That's correct. That's correct. You do your risk assessment, um, risk and hazard assessment, and then you go into implementing your plan. That's correct. I mean, it's very important because on your previous slideshow, you were showing the um, the visitors, the, it is, um, I've seen, I've been to Cell C the other day and I had to lock myself into a visitor's uh, register um, because they need to record whoever went into that shop um, for possible risk. I think that is mainly what it is. And then after the possible risk, it will, it will be then your control measures and providing recommendations and then get to the, the meeting where you, as, as the employer, as well as your compliance officer, will then not dictate, but tell that is the rules of this workplace. Yes, um, exactly. So the focus will be on how to return the employees, um, how to deal with them in the workplace and ensure their safety and visitors. I think those are the three pillars that's important and that needs to be implemented. Yeah, I think the employer must also vision, yeah, that do you, if you do have a health and safety uh, uh, control measures or policy framework, whatever, already in place before this COVID thing, this must be read with your standing or, or SOPs of your health and safety currently. Um, because I think that is that is the essence of the whole thing is it does fall under the Health and Safety Act. It also falls under Disaster Management Act 2002. 
Um, but that was only written for hazardous uh, biological agents that you might be get in contact. And the disaster management regulations that is now, with the amendments, there was a lot of amendments. Uh, we were seeing them, like I was saying, it was flying like a cut. Um, yes, so those three must be read together uh, in your health and safety policy and procedures in your workplace. So yes, that you make so do you make it a, 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 a joint venture basically for future uh, agents that might be also contaminating the employees or yeah. whoever they that's are. why i included a, a section of consultation uh, when you have this meeting it's just not just an information um, session i think there must be some sort of consultation if i read it directly charles um we, our labor law is is basically uh, based on on cooperation and consultation so there's a few issues to discuss at this meeting which is important and you'll see on the screen there uh, some I've, thoughts I've, that i have I'm, i fully agree with you especially where there's a union involved um then that organized labor that needs to be invited into this meeting also and make party to this because they need also to lead by an example with their members to say you better adhere to these things because these new rules and you can be dismissed if there's any misconduct proof against you. So this is not only a health and safety thing, but this is also to say there's new, new rules in the workplace, guys, and we are protected under the law to implement it. And we have to foresee that it's uh, executed correctly. Because if Department of Labor, now calling Department of uh, Employment and Labor, steps in here, they audit us, we can be fined. And, the, the, and I looked at the file. Unfortunately, I don't have a copy of that. Um, but yes, that, that's quite amazing. But uh, yes, they can actually shut your doors also for non-compliance. Um, so yes. I don't think any employer wants on this stage to get a, a, a non-compliance certificate from the Department of Labor. And I must be honest, the, uh, the Minister of Health um, mentioned that there's about 60% uh, compliant companies only in South Africa on this stage. Exactly. Uh, compliance is important and sharing of information is important. So you'll start with preparing your workplace, you'll start with your compliance officer, and then at this meeting, you consult and you discuss with your employees the recommendations that listed in the guide and that you've agreed upon. But ensure that everyone signs the register so that they have a buy-in and that you have proof at least that they saw um, the new policies. And at the end of the meeting, Remember, you are the employer, you make the rules. So declare that the policies have been discussed and agreed to, and the measures are now implemented. That's the most important thing, I think, Charles. Yeah, no, I think this consultation uh, must also be viewed as, as a training session or awareness session that you do um, add some skills to yourself to take it home also and exercise that same uh, cautionary. Uh, or precautionary measures at home, going to the shop, uh, going to the schools, the schools now possibly opening soon. Um, all these kind of things that we not only in the workplace going to be affected by this uh, virus, we're going to maybe be affected out there also. And, and shame, I, I'm re, uh, this um, a news um, cameraman, Lung, uh, Lungile Tom, uh, it's sad that he passed away now on Wednesday. And I mean, he picked it up somewhere. He don't even know. They don't even know also. Um, and that's an amazing thing about it. This, this uh, warfare that we are facing on this stage, it, it, it is something that's airborne. It's not transmittable. It's airborne. That means the droplets, that is the thing that takes the air and goes to you. So that is where we have to do the... the, the in the consultation, but also in the awareness training project, uh, which is very vital, important. And this whole policy or, 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 or framework or procedures within uh, this COVID-19 must be written in such a language that everybody do understand it properly. It's no ways to go into heavy legal terms and, um, you know, a, a very seniority in language or anything like that. In a layman's term, write it so everybody understands it. That's important. How do you wear your mask? Those funny things, it's not funny. It is crucially important that they do know about it. 
But just coming back to the consultation, I do agree. It's not a choice because the act is very much uh, of the you as the employer must. It is not maybe or will, it is must. Yeah. I think it's a good thing, Charles, uh, that you think of, of this as a training session and an empowerment session where you not only implement your rules in the workplace, but go beyond that, like you said, um, look at social distancing, et cetera, in the workplace, in your, at your homes, et cetera. It's, it's to empower people as well, I think. Yeah, you know, Dion, we had a, uh, um, I had a weapon here yesterday, yesterday afternoon with uh, some countries in East Africa which I'm busy also assisting them there. Um, and interesting enough that they are adopting a lot of our standards, because obviously it comes UK and the um, European unions um, that we already adopted also, and they adopt the same at their side also. So, um, um, and I could learn that there's, there's a lot of a weakness of uh, knowledge about this corona thing. They are, really looking for help please help us please help us write this whole thing mm. and um just for the audience the delegates i did not spend a lot of time not doing anything yes i updated the first policy can you remember when we wrote that policy dion the first no, one three weeks ago four weeks four weeks before we did the 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 the, the uh covid 19 framework um, or plan return back to work now, in, in all essence, I did update it. I emailed it also to, uh, to Peter de Tue. He is welcome to distribute it to all delegates that pre that's presently on today's uh, weapon um, I updated it with the mask and some other things also just to bring it all in line. Because on that stage, when we wrote it, nothing was said that the mask is mandatory. Um, and now when you get to a shop, they say to you, sorry, sir, where's your mask? No, no, no mask, no entry. That's easy as that. No, so you're, you're speaking uh, about the, the policy specific that's included in this manual. Just before this manual. Yeah, oh, the, the policy we did, but that policy we included in this manual um, and amended it in respect of the new regulations. Yeah. Right. Um, I think to, to, to make your job easier, this seems like a huge, huge responsibility. We've included a, a little bit of a checklist for you um, that I looked at um, before we started this uh, presentation when we went through the document. This is to ensure that you do comply and that you have looked at everything, your plan, policy and regulations. Right, so it's an easy checklist to go through. Uh, in more detail, obviously, when your compliance officer assists and he's appointed and he assists you with the detailed uh, employer responsibilities list, that you have a look at that and rework it and then he will issue a warrant letter uh, where he warrants that everything's been complied with so when the uh, inspectors from the department of labor um, arrives in, in your workplace your compliance officer will have this declaration or warrant letter ready and states that which states that you have done everything and have everything in place Remember, like Charles said, and I think you can come in here, um, there are uh, certain uh, even criminal uh, liability here. So it's, it's absolutely compulsory to have these things in place. I mean, the bottom of Labour's minister, uh, he was quite frank to say, I close your doors if you're not compliant. And that was, um, and, and, and also that uh, the, the template that was annexed to the amendment that came out from disaster management um, was actually given birth through the regulations of the mining industry. Because the, if you can recall, uh, there was a court case uh, which AMCU took the, the mine house to, to the labor court and asked the labor court to order the, the employer first to put in regulations, put policies and procedures in place before our members can return back to work. And the court handed it down in favor of AMCO. So it was a victory for AMCO on that, uh, on that uh, case. Uh, but again, yeah, it's the same here. Yeah, this template on, as an annexure to the amendment was given birth through that uh, court case. 
That's correct. And this is uh, where the, the workplace plan, I think, was given birth to. Yeah. It all um, was derived from the court case and, and what, what, what happened there. Right. Um, as you said, we, we're leading basically Africa at this stage and, and they're following our um, guidelines. Yeah, no, they, they're following our guidelines. I mean, they're also into lockdowns and they call other stages where we call it level one, level five to one. Uh, they will call it stages. It goes from country to country. I remember last night was like, yes, the afternoon was Kenya, Uganda, uh, who else is there? But there was, a, I had about 65 people, but they hungry for information, I'll be honest with you. And, and, and I think South Africa is quite, um, in a good position on this stage where we really did a lot of research and we had the academics and also the knowledgeable people to guide us through this whole process. So, um, yeah. Right, so included in the manual is a detailed employer checklist. Remember we have that quick uh, COVID-19 checklist where you see, have I done everything? This is your detailed checklist where you do your um, risks and exposures there's a lot of questions where you have to ask is this in place is it not applicable etc you'll have a look at that there's control measures and, and this this guides you and provides uh, recommendations to you to management so um, and and the employer to implement certain measures in the workplace that's why the detailed checklist is there right templates that we also included that i quickly went through is your PPE register. Whenever you, well, like Charles said, it is now compulsory for an employer to issue at least two face masks to each and every employee, and your PPE register will be proof of that. We've also included your employee um, history register, where you look at the traveling history, etc., and your visitors uh, checklist. There's an alternative checklist that I'm sure that Peter from EECM um, sent that is more in detailed that will also assist you. Then we the employee health disclosure document that we've also included. So look at the templates, look at the documents and see if you can make sense in implementing this plan. Everything is ready in the ready workplace manual and it will guide you. If you need any help, please um, do not um, hesitate to contact me. Um, Dion Lowe from Keystone Human Capital or Charles. Um, he's a senior arbitration litigation specialist from APCO Law in Cape Town. So that is basically the manual. Uh, if you need more guidance, please do not hesitate to contact us. Charles, anything from your side? Uh, I, Dion, it's um, delegates, you more than welcome to send us an email and uh, ask any further particulars that you do need. Um, maybe after the session, you say, oh, shucks, Schuster. I forgot that, uh, you're welcome. Um, you know, we are there to help. It's time to take, unfortunately we can't take hands, but we can take hearts and say, let's go through this whole pandemic. Um, and you know, just listening, just just looking at to the, the, the um, extract from the government Gazette 22956, dated 27 December 2001, now this is that's to do with the hazardous biological agents regulation. And employers shall, before any employee is exposed or may be exposed to HBA, that's now the agent, and after consultation with the health and safety committee established for the section of the workplace and ensure that the employee is adequately and comprehensively informed and trained on both practical aspects and theoretical knowledge with regards to the content and scope of these regulations. Now, if I say regulations, I mentioned earlier on, it is our disaster management 2002, as well as the new disaster management regulation 2020 with all the amendments that need to give consideration to the, po the possible uh, the potential risk to health caused by the exposure, the measure to be taken by the employer to protect an employee against any risk of being exposed. Can you hear the whole time the, the crux is on the employer? It is your duty to ensure 
and it was some training, training, uh, theoretical training given, well informed, adequately and comprehensively informed. So I think that is where your um, uh, consultation will come in, uh, Dion. Um, am I right here? Yeah, that's correct, Charles. The manual in itself is easy to understand if you follow the guidelines at the beginning of the document. Um, but I think the, the crux of the matter is before you implement, um, yes, look at your plan, but do the consultation, inform and be guided by, by what is said at the consultation. Uh, you know, what, what I think, um, what was addressed to me yesterday is that there's no sensitivity to this COVID virus and must they put sensitivity? Now, if I call it sensitivity, it's about um, placing a person on a spot, saying he might be contaminated with the virus. You can't do that because you can be liable for a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. So, and the employer also needs to also be sensitive here. If you suspect somebody was in contact with maybe somebody, call that person into camera. That means in private uh, chambers in your office or whatever, close the door and talk to him or her. And be frank, but be polite and be sensitive also. Because remember, if that person is tomorrow contaminated, tested positive, the trauma this person is going through. Um, so, I mean, this guy from ENCA News, he was on, on, on air the other day before he died on Wednesday. And it was like, snap like that, he died. And he's a young man. He's never not to, near to my age or Dion's age even. Um, so, I don't know what happens wrong there. But anyway, so we must not place a stigma to this whole thing also because the moment we're going to create a stigma of COVID-19 we're just going to make this whole thing a bomb in your workplace people panicking and don't know what to do so yeah there's room in the uh, manual and in the regulations that's how that's how we phrase the manual that you can amend and change to adapt to your um, circumstances um, nothing is cast in stone. Um, the phasing in plan, I see that there's on the chat, there's a, a, a question about the phasing in plan. It's up to you to decide as long as you adhere to the basics. That's why we have that section in the, the policy. Uh, uh, get, getting back to basics, getting the social distancing in place, sanitizing, uh, etc., wearing masks, uh, not to have too many people at once starting to work in the workplace, and not stigmatizing people like Charles said. Uh, so, the rules are yours to make um, and, and you'll be guided by the regulations and the manual. Charles, I think we should open up for questions maybe at this stage. No, if there's any questions, I can raise the questions so long. I um, just want to go into chat also if they want to chat. But um, no. if, I, if I can just add on with that, um, the face in process, please. The face in process should have been done already. We should have started something already, I'll be honest with you. The moment the Gazette came out, the rules was there already. So you were open already for liability. So remember, it's not after the session. Because of the session only today, we were supposed to already start getting something like posters out there, ensuring like uh, the onset, your mask issued two, two per employee. One is washable. Well, both of them must be washable, but one is in the wash, one is in use. Train them how to wear it. I'm seeing, I think, educated people wearing masks underneath their nose. What's the purpose of the, of the mask? Sweet blow, nothing. So why, why are you wearing the mask? That's my question. So educate the people or your staff members how to wear that mask. Put up posters of saying, come in one by one, wait for one to go out, that kind of thing, sign in the register. We need to record your whereabouts because of legislation. That's correct. So, the rules are yours. The rules are yours, Charles, as long as you stick yeah. to the basics. 
Eugene, um, I just want to answer you on your question. Where do we get the manual from? From Peter. You can ask Peter anytime. Um, he, is, he, he is the facilitator of this process also, and he asks us to come in. Yes, between Dion and myself, Dion and myself are working long for about 10 more years, apparently, uh, well, plus minus. Um, and um, we know one another, we know how we operate, how we think, how we do things, and we do thorough research uh, and double check it with everybody. Uh, so, and but that was given also by Peter to say, please guys, I think we must do this. And we did it. And they, they thought, go to Peter. Um, if he cannot assist, we can also assist. We do have the, the manual also with us. Um, so, and, just, and to, can, just to assist people um, quickly, if, if you want to ask a question, you can just unmute yourself right at the bottom there, um, left hand side, and then ask okay. your question. While we're waiting for someone to ask a question, I see that Frankly Tahini asked, is the mask now compulsory? Charles, yes, it is. The Whenever mask is compulsory, but we must remember it's not punishable by law. It is punishable by your own rules and regulations. Oh, good morning. Um, yes. It's Catherine. Um, I needed yes, Catherine. to find out to say if um, one of the of employees who with, with comorbidities is an, um, that can actually, because of the nature of their job, they cannot work from home, but when as a company we ask them to work at home, to actually stay home because of their condition and after a risk assessment is conducted, what is our recourse if the employee is refusing actually to stay home? Oh, no. Uh, look, what I would suggest, we, we as the employer, and I'm taking myself into your position, we as the employer cannot make a diagnostic a diagnostics of, of a person's medical conditions. We cannot write a prognosis on it. We need to ask a medical practitioner. So what will be the best in this instance is if, if they refuse, they say, fine, if you refuse, I'm going to send you to my doctor. That means the company's doctor. The company doctor will then give us a prognosis. Now, prognosis are limited to information, but it gives you a, a view of the condition of the employee. Now, the prognosis from the doctor will then tell you whether the employee may work in COVID-19 or no, it is dangerous. Once you do have that certificate, the employee cannot enter the, the workplace. And unfortunately, yeah, the employee have to rely on to uh, UIF payments. Does it answer you, Catherine? Yes, it does. Um, we do refer ours to the company doctor to, to actually get the assessment, the prognosis, but we still feel that maybe we might get a challenge because remember, sometimes it's the issue that we will claim for them from the TRS for payment when they are staying at home. So sometimes employees would feel that what they get from there is less than what they would get when they normally come from home. And thank you very much for the answer. Yes, uh, it's a pleasure, Catherine. And, and you know, it, it is a challenge, but it's a, a challenge like I am, you gave me instruction and I disobey your instruction. So that's a misconduct. And if you did it for precautionary measures to the health of your employee, you're in a, such a good spot that you did the right thing. Let's see. Thank you very much. Hi, Charles. Hi, hi. Uh, how are you? Good news, Hal. How can I help? I'm good. So I just wanted to ask, né? we are looking to reopen our offices on level three. So I just wanted to find out what is the process of uh, applying for a permit to do so? You have to wait for a level three and then go back onto the website of CPIC. Then you can okay. apply a permit. And you must remember that Anecdote 2 permit also needs to be still filled in. Though we're even going into level one, it still needs to be there. Okay, so we must just wait for level three to be announced, and then yeah, that's when we can apply level, for a permit. Yeah, once level three has been announced, it's normally two days before the time that we're going open. Maybe this one is going to be on a staggering basis, like every day something is opening, opening till we really. Okay. In so I would suggest that you wait till they make the announcement. We are officially now uh, on level three. What kind okay. of business are you in? It's an investment company. Investment company, okay, all right. Yes. Yeah, okay. um, it's not essential services, but had, did you make already an application to, to CPIC? 
No, no, we haven't. We we're just uh, trying to see what's the process because we are confused of what do we do? Do we go to business portal? Do we go to CIPC or Department of Labor or whatnot? No, so we you, just you have to know go it. through, through bizportal.gov.za. Okay. And then uh, after? Uh, once you're in there, you will see that there's company registrations, all those kind of things. You click okay. on that. Um, I think it's services. Um, okay. Go into services and then you will see, I'm, I call it a, a lot of buttons. Um, there's a lot of buttons and then there's a red one, COVID-19. You go on okay. it, it will prompt you questions and you can just okay. answer as it comes. The first question okay. will be registration of your company. Okay. All right. So, and okay. so there it's easy. It's really easy. Okay. Now, thank you. It's a pleasure. Charles, just before the next question comes, everyone, I see that there's a question from Giselle on the chat. Sanitizing the work area, do we need a certificate issued to confirm the correct cleaning was done? Yes, indeed. You have to use a company that is accredited to do sanitization, cleaning, uh, you know, basically biology, biological uh, uh, agents which were spilt. Um, they will use, be used for hospitals and that kind of things. So they must give you a compliance certificate and they must give you a certificate so that you can put it up and give, provide it when the Department of Labor walks in and say, when last did you sanitize your place? Because it's one of the questions that might be asked. And it's a very good answer to this. Thank you for asking, uh, answering that. Uh, it's Giselle Pocket who asked the question. Oh, uh, Giselle, yeah, I saw that. I just want to go and see. Sorry, I just have a question. Um, I'm Lindsay. Yes, Lindsay. Um, I just wanted to find out, um, we are mainly a call center in the health industry, so we're essential and we've been working the whole way through remotely and in the office. However, I just wanted to check in the call center, obviously uh, we are required to wear masks um, and the spacing and so on of seating and so on. It's sometimes talking over a phone with a mask on is a problem. How, and I know my call center is going to ask me that. Can they take their masks off while they're sitting at their desk? Yes, yes. Um, Lindsay, yes, there's a lot of alternatives. Um, sure, if you can give me your email address, I can maybe email you uh, a company which sells these products. But it's actually, uh, I don't know when last you've been to this game or something like that. I saw one year in Cape Is it Town. the shields? Uh, the shield. shield. Do you think they would the need shield. to use the shield? Okay. You can use the shield. That's fine. Or you can, I've got one of these. It's more practical for a call center where you do have enough oxygen, oxygen to come through. You can have your telephone here and you can talk properly. The shield protects the, the droplet to go further. Okay. All right, so there is outcomes to the solution. So, but I would say that the shield standing in front of you, um, that will be good for your managers also if they need to interview to put the shield in front of them also. Person mm -hmm. sitting that side of the table, manager this side of the table, they can communicate without the mask. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. I just wanted to verify that. Thank you. Uh, pleasure, Lindsay. Lind Lind yeah, uh, just on top of that, remember what I said, it is not punishable by law, but it's mandatory. So it's only for health precautionary measures that we are wearing masks. Though there's a lot of boo made about it, so Africa decided it's compulsory. So yes. Charles, sorry, this is Whitey Thomas. Um, when do you need to sanitize? Only when a person has tested positive or when? Um, good, uh, good morning, uh, with uh, Wati. Um, yes, you know, when you need to do this is when maybe there was one or two people in a small space, like an office, um, where you will have a lot of people going in and out, especially your employees, that needs to be sanitized once there's some, some of your employees was then contaminated or tested positive with this. With this. I had a security company the other day um they do have something like 16 members at the office their manager as you know is operations manager so he comes and go and he was then pos uh, tested positive and for the safety of everybody we said sanitize the whole building give it one day to go and come back the next day 
So it is, a, it is not compulsory, but it is your discretionary decision to do so, but it's always good. If there was a positive uh, individual or individuals tested, I would recommend that. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, so the charm, if social, social distancing in the workplace is compiled, should a mask be, still be worn? Yes, yes, yes. Um, that is a, a, a must. And we must really uh, be strong about that point. Morning, Charles. This is Shay speaking. Hello, Shay. Uh, I got a quick question here. We're in the construction industry, yeah. and what, where we need some clarity is if somebody has been tested positive for COVID nineteen, we have up to three people, four hundred people on a on a site at any one time, yeah. um, and the site then is then closed to be sanitized. First of all, does it need to be? Because you don't know where in the eleven story building the guy's been pretty much everywhere probably. How do we go about? Sanitizing an 11 story building, first of all, and then while it's being sanitized and you have to send everybody home, all your subcontractors, your own people, how does the law recognize the payment thereof? Because we cannot find anything in the regulations. Do you pay, do you have to pay your staff? Because now you've got obviously hundreds of people and they can go for two or three days, once a month at the very least. Yeah, well, you know, uh, where there is a, a shutdown of the office, it's much easier to answer this because then you can apply to TAF. But if it's in your circumstances where there was one, I think we must identify this person, where he was, and what was the possibility for a potential risk, and where will this risk be? I doubt if it's going to be the whole 11 stores. Um, um, I think it will be where he worked it maybe that that must be uh, disinfected, uh, sanitized, whatever, um, um, and not all 11 stores because the droplet is going far as 1.5 meters, 2 meters max. Um, so that is the thing. So if you can monitor your, your staff and identify where that person was at the time that he was pos uh, tested positive, then you know at least which area to close. I don't know, but beyond your knowledge onto this. Should be the question, Charles? Um, it, he was asking, he's got 400 staff members and um, they've got a, they are a constructive co uh, company. They do have uh, obviously subcontractors and employees. Now one person has been um, identified as positive. Must they do the whole 11 floors? Um, sanitize and send everybody home and who's going to pay for them for that four or five days they're going to sit at home. Now first of all what I said is if it was uh, um, for um, quarantine it's easy you go through UIF or TAF. But in this case it's one individual I would say you monitor where the individual was at the time that he was tested positive and only sanitize that area. Yeah, I think that the, the, the manual can be a guideline in this regard. You, you look at the travel um, history and you look at the, the movement history of that individual and the immediate contacts that he came into contact with, even in the workplace, and your uh, focus will be in the workplace, all the contacts that he came into uh, contact with and the work areas, look at sanitizing it, look at quarantining them, uh, put them on, on leave, um, even if it's unpaid leave. They must be quarantined. The basics. Hey, are we giving you the right uh, guideline? No, are you? I, I, I don't. I don't think it's. it's no, I don't uh, think so because uh, call it an electrician for argument's sake. You yeah. will have a setup on the downstairs in a basement where the stores are. They will mm -hmm. walk up a stairs uh, like with the, everybody else. And they'll work on multiple floors. So you don't actually know where he's been in contact with because he's been in contact, walked past many people. Um, and, and I think putting, uh, you can't put, can you put an entire site on sick leave? Because I think the, the councils will, the bargaining councils will collapse if that happens. 
They will. <laughs> You're quite right. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I would take you the same as, as a supermarket. Unfortunately, if one person or two persons being detected the positive, they can shut down the whole supermarket for a period. Now, only the only one who can give you proper guidelines the test. That means the bottom of health. And they will guide you to say, when can you reopen your, uh, your site and when not? Thank you. Are you with me now? Yeah. So that, that means that you have to call in the assistance of the Department of Health and tell them, I do have a problem. I've got 400 people on this site working currently. What is your guidance? And they must guide you because they will know how to take you through this whole thing. I'm just taking a, a, for an example here in Bayside, in Cape Town, uh, in Doberg Strand, there is the shop uh, checkers that were shut down twice. The first time they shut him down for two days and they reopened it. A week later they shut down him. I don't know if it's reopened yet, but it was shut down the last two weeks already. Nobody entered or going there, nothing whatsoever, because thereafter two people died. Um, so, but uh, again, if you if you rely on the Department of Health, you are safeguarded because they need to tell you yes or no in writing whether you can operate or not operate. And once they tell you, listen, you're going all into quarantine, then you have to apply then through uh, UIF. Um, obviously, it will be um, <coughs> sorry, not only UIF but also with COIDA because the uh, the medical expenses must be paid to COIDA. Yeah, Charles, I think the idea is to go back to basics. Get the contacts that he's been in contact with, sanitize the working areas, and do what you can um, to prevent being shut down completely. Don't send everyone on sick leave because it's not what um, you suggest. It's special leave. Um, even if it's unpaid, they must be quarantined for at least 14 days. All these contacts. Yeah. That will assist you not to be shut down by the department. Get the basics in, in place and work, uh, focus on that. All right. Uh, Jan Bester, can you come in here and just give me some more detail about your question here? Uh, many clients have their own sanitization or sanitizing expectations for specific work conduct. Um, I don't know where these clients. Uh, I really just show, have my hands there and let them spray me with some sanitizing uh, agent and um, I'm happy. <laughs> so, Jan, can you can you please help us here? I don't know if Jan is still in the in the room. No, I don't think so. Okay. Anyway, um, there's one sanitizer, and they say it's the alcohol-based sanitizer. You get a gel one or the liquid one. You use one of those two. There was somebody asking me yesterday or the day before that towels must it be paper towels i said yes it must be paper towels but it must be um, when you actually throw it away it must not be seen as just a piece of paper because now if there's maybe um, a, a virus on it the cleaner comes touch it put it in a bag and pick up the, the virus go to the dustbins the dustbin guys pick it up and there goes the virus further on and further remember it's airborne virus so you can go to macro all these bigger places they can sell you these big paper towels for less than nothing it's not that expensive but you don't use material um towels at all um Giselle Pocita, um I can look for you up. Um, I do have a couple in Cape Town. I don't know if you in Cape Town. Um, uh, no, we're in Joburg, um, in the Santa in area. So I just needed to check which uh, ones you guys recommend, because obviously I want, we want to make sure it's the proper certified company. Look, if they can give you a certified um, accredited certificate to say that they are sanitizing company, um, because they put on all these PPEs, you know, protective uh, equipment and, and 
clothing and all that type of things and go into your place. Um, so, and they can issue you once that to say, yes, your certificate to prove that we sanitize your whole place. Yes, that, that's fine. Just check their the credentials. If you want, you can send a copy of the, 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 the certificate. I can check it through my health and safety team also, um, and they can comment on, on that. Perfect. Thank you. My pleasure. So, as I see, there's a question from Inga Marie Kotze. If you wear a face or screen shield, is it not compulsory anymore to wear a material mask as well? Is it one or the other? Now, if I remember correctly, the only um, uh, uh, Regulation is that you need to cover up. So it's either one will be sufficient. I remember that the uh, president and and uh, uh, Minister Zuma also uh, advised, even if you only have a scarf later, but at least cover up. But now, in terms of regulations for the workplace, two cloth masks must be provided, and those must be worn inside of the working place. Outside, it's well, either or, but inside of the working place, it's compulsory to provide them with two cloth masks. Um, Inger Marie, um, just to further also elaborate on what Dion was said, I'm fully in agreement with what he said. Um, there's two things. The, the shield is something to protect you, um, also somebody in the public. And it is 100% acceptable. Um, I'm see, I see, I've see, i seen a couple of uh, uh, supermarkets here um, that were issuing their staff with only the, the, the shield. Um, some of them, the cashiers, are wearing the shield and the mask if they don't have these uh, standing shields in front of them. Now, SPA and DISCAM and that are identified. They've got a, a hanging shield in front of them already, so they don't wear any mask or any shield because you are talking through this piece of shield in front of you. Um, Hopefully I, I've answered you there, but I also in agreement with, with, with Dion to say the company to its employees must issue two material masks. That's in the regulations. You cannot That's get the regulations. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? I wish you were with me yesterday afternoon. The guys in, in East Africa who was hungry, they were pouring with questions. I had to stop them at the stage. But very interesting. Yes. There was a lot of questions, Charles, on where the, um, the manual can be obtained and how the manual can be understood outside of this session. Um, I think uh, they can contact Peter. Peter can, at the end of the session, provide the email addresses. I've also on the chat room provided our email addresses where they can ask any questions um, in respect of the yeah. manual. Uh, they're welcome yeah. to, if they don't feel free to, to do it in this session. If, if you require us to assist you further in, your, in, this, in, the, in the process of uh, getting your, your manual correctly drafted, everything, it's also available, yes. Um, I saw you put our email address, and the email address was on the at the last page of your presentation. Also, um, I just want to check here, Wellington. Um, Inga Marie, yes. yes. I could ask one more question, Charles. Yes. Um, yes. Just a clarity on the issue. Um, we had a, a boarding school here in Mpopa, up in the mountains, and obviously that was closed now for almost two months. So can we only bring in our normal cleaning people to deep clean and do their normal cleaning process because no infection was on the campus yet? Do we yeah. have a special certificate for a specialist company to do the cleaning? But I don't think that's necessary. and I don't think that's compulsory. Only once you have an infection on campus, then you need to um, start sterilizing. And am I correct in saying that? Yeah, uh, if there was somebody that, that was po uh, tested positive, Obviously, you have to do that. Uh, maybe one or more, like uh, I mentioned, uh, uh, I mean, in the first instance, there was one person. And they, after, I think it was four, um, I'm talking on the correction, um, I think it was four, and then two died. And that's why they closed him indefinitely. So I don't want to go to that shop anyway. Um, no, your cleaning staff can come in and clean and sanitize and you don't need the certificate. 
But once there's contamination da, um, 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 executed or done to one person or two pieces or more, then you have to get somebody to come and professionally sanitize your place. Thank you, understand. Thanks. All right. I see that Wellington also had a question. I'm not sure if he's. Yes, I, I, I just wanted to ask about this 30% phasing in a rule. We are an essential services company, so we didn't close during lockdown. Are we required in our plan to phase in people at 30%? We just send people at home to stay at home that were not that critical, just as a mitigating factor. Do we put in, do we phase them 30% each time? Well, in the plan? Wellington, I think the, 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 the call is st still out there. Please stay at home. Um, and if your staff can rather work from home, maybe your admin staff or something like that, um, I would not face them in right now. I will keep them where they are and um, let them work from home, if that's okay. Essential service is different. You guys need to be out there in the front. Um, and, and, and therefore, yes, you must come to the office, you must come and work, and you must face the virus. And I take my hat off for you that. So, um, but your other staff that you put on, um, well, I don't know if you put them on tabs um, or you put them on, 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 on um, just to work from home. Rather keep no, they're working from home. Yeah, no, no, I would rather keep them um, Wellington to be safe. Okay. Um, Thank you. I want to also answer your question, Willie. You don't need to do the phase in. Where you will start is with your list of employees. Who are those with comorbidities at this stage? Who are those above 60 and who can work from home? Do that investigation and uh, ensure that you can at least uh, uh, give some direction to, to those people that needs to work at home, that do uh, show certain medical conditions, that they stay at home, and look at those above 60 to protect them. I think that's what, that's your starting point. You're already in the okay. workplace, you're already there, so you don't need to do the pacing. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I fully agree, yes. Yeah. Right, um, there's a question. Can the presentation be emailed to us? I think the session is recorded, and uh, Peter will assist us with that after the presentation. Um, then, with reference to the vehicle policy, Charles, um, I have some thoughts on that. Do we have to sanitize? This is from John. Do you have to sanitize mm -hmm. or disinfect the vehicle every time after transporting a person or a staff? The uh, yeah. directives said um, sanitize the vehicle before your shift, sanitize the vehicle yeah. before and after you have driven in it. So, yes. The amount of usage of your vehicle for passengers is very important. Um, and last yesterday I mentioned, you know, the mask must be where, where, um, not when you're driving in your own vehicle with your wife or your girl, girlfriend or your husband or whatever, that you are familiar, you're living together. You don't, you don't need to wear the, the mask, but once you step out of the vehicle, you need to put it on. But when you get into an Uber, a meter taxi, you need to wear the mask. And you must ensure that the driver is also wearing the, um, the mask. Um, yes, all the taxis I used Uber the other day to go see a client quickly, uh, and um, they sanitized my seat, everything before I got in, and my hands were sanitized. Well, they gave me sanitization to sanitize quickly, and um, oh, that's how they operate so very professional from uber i think they they manage the people very much so you when you use a normal other meter taxi the same then there's the 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 the, the community taxis they are limited to amount of seven people per per transport uh though they're still overloaded so, but that's only my thought on this stage um there's so, also thank you very much for sorry, that. Uh, john oh, so sorry just to interrupt here um dion just to elaborate on uh, on you as well yes our production team will have a look at this uh recording it, the 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 current meeting is being recorded our production team will look at it edit it and every delegate attending here today 
will receive this recording. So sorry to bother in, Dion, you can proceed. Okay, brilliant. Thanks, Peter, for that. Dion, um, Dion can I, I see... just answer a Vilma sure. quickly? A Vilma, hand sanitizer for all employees as well? Yes. Um, you don't need to issue each and every individual, but you must make it available in the workplace. I don't know what kind of workplace you are, Vilma, but um, they must have quick access to sanitize, uh, sanitizer um, that you place maybe on a little stand or on a table and that kind of thing. Um, and remember, um, you don't need to go and buy very expensive bars of soap uh, for the instance of washing hands. Normal soap will kill the virus on your hands. As long as you do a proper wash of the hands with soap and water, running water, that is very important. Okay, I just want to answer Samantha K. Okay, it looks yeah. we have been at home since the lockdown started, and we will be going back on level three. I think there's a lot of people that will possibly go <laughs> back to work at the end of May if we may. Pardon the pun. Um, so the question is, do we need to? look at everyone and see if they are affected or will the normal check-in the temperature be okay there's a guideline in our um uh, policy that's part of the starter pack um uh, point eight point eight screening uh your company must screen workers for symptoms of COVID 19 when they report for work you look at fever cough sore throat etc shortness of breath temperatures etc and this is all part of the um register to screen employees that we provided remember we said that you must screen your employees and you must screen your visitors so when they return to work there's guidance in the manual uh, if you look at the register on how to screen them and as soon as you um, see that there are the possibility of them having um, COVID-19 we suggest quarantine put them on special leave paid or unpaid and of course sick leave will come into play if they are indeed um, uh, certified by a doctor that they do have uh, COVID-19. Charles, your thoughts? Yeah, no, I fully agree on that. Um, um, it's, it's important the, the moment there's a, the guidelines, go through the guidelines and they will guide you properly about that. Um, the same is also Nashwin. Nashwin, um, good morning. Um, yes, um, no, I see you are issuing medical type. No, I hope it's the, it's the three layer uh, medical type. Where's mine? Let me see. Uh, this one, maybe. I don't know, Nash. You can you can just correct me, Nash. One. Um, but you don't have to issue the material. This one, because this one is a disposable. If I finish today with it, I take it off. I throw it away. It's surgical. Uh, um, what you call waste? Surgical waste. It's not normal waste. Remember, we have to differentiate between our dustbins also. What is surgical and what is not surgical? So, Charles, if you're using I this, th I fine. think it's important. It's important to be guided um, by the guidelines, Nashwin. Um, it says cloth mask, like Charles indicated there, but if your risk assessment indicates that they must be provided with alternative PPE, for instance, the N95 or N97 masks, then uh, it's it's your responsibility to provide an even bigger protection PPE. But the, the starting point is at least two top masks, like Charles is indicating at the moment. Nash, you, you, you let me think now what happens here in Cape Town with uh, Golden Arrow bus. Um, they, one of their drivers was positive, uh, positive and um, he was tested positive sorry and with the spokesperson said you know all our drivers are in an actually confined department in the bus so nobody can touch you or hug you or whatever the case might be because it is closed off with shields and you do have a little loop i know that that you can maybe exchange money or something like that so where he actually picked up the the, the, the virus they do not know so it could be out there and, and i don't know if he's staying maybe in a um, informal settlement it could be we don't know what's happening there we we 
sometimes tend to <clears throat> be a bit harsh on our employees also, but we don't know what is their circumstances out there in the public and at home. Okay. So it all boils down to your risk assessment on what type of mask they need to have. But the, the starting point is two cloth masks, like the one you've uh, showed. And I see that and I shouldn't say, yes, that's the, the same type that we issue. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, that, that's fine because this one is only a once of use and you throw it away. So I use mine, for example. I've got my own material mask <laughs> and I've got a, the shield also. Um, yeah, I'm scared. I'm scared the, the CCMA is opening and Balgany Councils is opening from next week. So um, I'm worried. I'm really worried. Charles, I have another question. Yes, Inga, you're welcome. <laughs> um, we have a family business, a sawmill. Okay, so we actually allowed to start with 50% of our employees with manufacturing. Um, yeah, but it's not viable for us. We can't start up the sawmill with 50% of our employees. Mm. Will we be allowed to start with 100% at once or aren't we allowed to do that? You know, this is going back to and they actually want you to go proportional wise to start your business. And I understand what you're saying. You need basically 100%. Um, you know, if you talk about 100%, is that your operational staff or your admin and operational staff? Yeah, we run a very low admin staff component and the majority is operational. And we actually, over the last two years, cut our workforce down to the basic, the actual, yeah, there's no spare people on the, in the sawmill. So, and one, everyone is trained to do the job they are doing. So the one person can't do the other person's work. Yeah. So it's very difficult to, um, yeah. Well, for, from, from an operational point of view, if this, if this manual's in place, your staff has been, has been, um, comprehensively and adequately trained and made aware of the whole thing and what they must do and what they must not do and you can at least uh, in, um, secure distancing social distancing I would not foresee a problem with that I mean if you say the admin is small leave your admin at home bring in your operations and say well we can only work according like that um, I think you you've got a false operation that that requires everybody to be back in the operation. Okay, thanks. All right. So remember, I think it's, it's the it's the training, the the, the training and, and and also this manual that is very important for your business. That I can tell you now. Thank you very much. Now, Inga Marie, I'm going to add to that. The most important thing is do your risk assessment um, and. Go back to basics, do the basics, get everything in place, then you'll be able to um, at least distinguish only between phasing in people that shows comorbidities at this stage and all the elderly to phase them in later. Then you can start with a with a larger workforce. Okay. Uh, uh, HR, I see yours is your uh, when an employee is notified to return to work, can the employer request that the staff member bring a letter from his doctor to confirm that the staff member is fit for work? And can the employer include this request as a requirement in the COVID policy doc? Yes, I fully agree with you. That's a precautionary measure. If he was tested positive and now returning from his quarantine and recovering stage, uh, he must obtain a releasing document to say that he's fit for work. That can be issued by the Department of Health through the clinic, the hospital, like we're with us in, here in Tigerberg, or his personal doctor if he was treated in a private hospital through his doctor. Right, I don't think there's any more questions on the, um, on the chat side. Anyone that's still attending that has a question for me or Charles? I don't see anybody still here with a, a question. Um, All right, brilliant. Um, maybe yeah. we, can, we can just uh, ask Peter maybe to just give the, um, the the last thoughts on how 
and when people can get this recording and how they can obtain their manual and maybe provide the yeah. contact details. Uh, thank you Peter? very much, uh, Charles and Dion. I uh, really appreciate. Um, yes, what uh, what we will do is we will uh, we will do the recording. I just need to give it through to our production team, of course. Uh, they're going to edit the whole uh, recording, and what what we will do as ECMS as well as out of Charles and Dion's point of view, uh, Epcor Labor Law, uh, we, will, we will mail the link to each and every one. I think Charles, um, just, to, just to elaborate on the discussions that happened this morning, um, if possible, Charles, if you can just from your side, give your con uh, contact details and your uh, email address and your website address uh, because I have to elaborate to everyone attending the meeting today that please bear in mind, ECMS, we are specialists in employment equity and not into the whole COVID-19 uh, legislation that came through the past week uh, Charles, again, to you and Dion, thank you very much for all the effort that you have done between the two of you in terms of explaining what, uh, what, uh, what you had to study up throughout the night within one week to have this presentation. ECMS, we are not specialists in what Charles and Dion has discussed today. What I can ask, if possible, Charles, if you can just maybe give your company's details, anything from here, you will have to contact Charles directly and say, you know what, this is our, uh, maybe a, 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 a specific company wise, and then they can elaborate on that. We are not specialists on that. Uh, Charles, if you can just maybe elaborate on your contact details. Okay, Peter, thank you very much. In the chat room, um, Dion and myself submitted our email addresses. Uh, Charles Kinney at appcordalaw.co.za. Uh, Dion is at Keystones Human Capital, .co .za. Um, you can You can contact us anytime on, on that. Uh, I can give you my, number, my cell phone number also. Um, which you can send me a WhatsApp if I'm busy um, and I will contact you back. That's not a problem. It's 74 659 My contact details directly on my cell phone, 74 659 I am on WhatsApp, so make use of that WhatsApp and send me your email address and we can have a discussion there or I can call you back, no problem. Um, yes, uh, like I said, we... We're constantly trying to update this whole thing through uh, my panel. I do have uh, occupational health and safety um, uh, agents that's sitting with me and we're discussing this every day. Um, and we also developing more and more courses. We've got a quite an intensified um, or a very intense course for COVID-19, which is a two day course. Um, yeah, uh, but anyway. If you require that, we can we can give you the information on that also. Um, that is done through Zoom also. I don't go to your place. You sit at your your office, at your home, and you enjoy our presentation through that. Um, it's quite a lengthy, but it's very comprehensive and it's very intense. Uh, it's nothing. The manual is very important. It's nothing. We discuss other things in that health and and, and safety. Um, uh, COVID-19 policy or training program. Uh, we take you in depth, in depth into the, the, the legislation, in the wording, and, and we're giving you, uh, there's a lot of videos you're going to look at, and yeah, just a short one on that, but anyway, all right. I think uh, just, to, just to elaborate on that, thank you very much, Charles. Um, I personally think just to elaborate on that, please bear in mind that the course that uh, that Charles 
mentioned just now, you can claim your BEE points on the money spent towards African Indians and colored. In other words, you enroll on that. Not only you, your employees can enroll on that. You get a certificate. It is also, Charles, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's also CETA accredited. So each and every individual will receive a certificate and you can claim your points. Come. If you need any more information on that, you can uh, please personally email Charles and or Dion, and uh, you can you can take it from there. Just a last thought, Peter. The manual they can obtain from you, and they can also contact us to to guide them on, on where to get the manual. Absolutely, and I will I will mail each and every delegate that attended today. I will email the relevant information to them and I will be able to contact EPCOR Labor Law. Brilliant. Thank you, Peter. Good. Cool. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Um, I see the delegates were sitting in their seats and I love it. I love it. It's good. We must take this thing very seriously. We must take it hands on with passion. And when we do it, we do it correct. Once done, done and dusted. I always believe in that. Um, yeah. As the president said last night, we're all learning here and we're all letting things develop as they happen. <laughs> Thanks for attending. I see. Thank you very much to all the positive thank yous. And um, uh, yes, um, from my side, I just want to say take care, be safe, be strong, don't give in. We will want this. Thank you very much for that, Charles. I will then end this meeting now. Everyone will receive the link before next week, Monday. EECMS is introducing the first virtual employment equity compliance solution by taking your consultant online. Clients are no longer required to conduct face-to-face -face meetings with our consultants. Our virtual solution will allow clients from around the globe to interact, consult, and train with their respective consultants from the comfort of their own desk. With our web-based compliance services, your employment equity solution submissions and consultations will stay compliant as per the requirements of the Act, no matter where you are based. No more travelling or boardroom bookings. We bring the service to your desktop. Conduct conference calls with remotely based colleagues and superiors during the consult. Share live documents or screens to all attendees and consultants for brainstorming or clarification sessions. Audio visually record meeting discussions between yourselves and the consultant for references and notes. Join the web-based consultancy services today and comply with your employment equity services from the comfort of your own desk. Speak to your consultant for more information or contact our information center for details on the services rendered. EECMS, your virtual employment equity compliance management service. EECMS utilizes an online tool to ensure full and total EE compliance as per the amended Act. We ensure that you are in full compliance with the Employment Equity Act. We do it all. You just need to connect with us as we aim to become your go-to guy. We meet and consult via our virtual solutions. We implement the Act and you achieve compliance. Employers with over 50 employees Agriculture over 6 million turnover, mining over 22.5 million turnover, manufacturing over 30 million turnover, electricity, gas and water over 30 million turnover, construction over 15 million turnover, retail and motor over 45 million turnover and more. Eliminate penalties, increase a triple BEE score, forming a sense of belonging to employees, effective transformation, and promoting diversity. We submit the EEA2 and EEA4 reports on behalf of our clients, after approval thereof by the CEO or accounting officer. EECMS has a level four broad-based black economic empowerment rating. Our clients therefore qualify for 100% recognition when procuring from us. 
Our CEO has been involved in various marketing and communication entities. We have various EE specialists, including a compliance auditor with three years experience at one of the big four auditing firms. Our team has been involved in 62 DG reviews from 2017 to September 2019 with a 100% pass rate of companies not being referred to the Labor Court. Submissions of reports are done by a number of experienced data capturers and we have a staff complement to ensure the successful submissions of all our clients. We currently serve more than 160 companies who employ anything between 6 to 12,500 employees. Our client base includes private companies, listed companies, close corporations, non-profit organizations, educational institutions and government. Clients' annual turnover ranges from very little to more than 1 billion rand and we have a client base throughout South Africa. EECMS, your virtual employment equity compliance management service.